I mean, 10 minutes and you've got this. It's freaking insane. This recipe is one of the recipes that I have been cranking out constantly in the past few weeks because as you can imagine, uh, I'm still filming videos for you guys and at the end of the day, I am pretty tired. Uh, so I need something really quick and really comforting and also something that my two-year-old toddler will eat uh, and she loves egg drop soup. I mean, check out how cute she is eating my cauliflower version, which I've done for you guys. So there's the big news, everyone. Yes, I'm super excited. I can't believe that we're nearly there. Uh, and to celebrate, let's make a really awesome soup. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start with the tomato first of all, because I've got a little trick here that I always do with my tomatoes that I think you guys will really love. It gets the best flavor out of them. And I just want some rough chunks here. And then here's the little secret. Season the tomatoes and let them sit for a little while. The salt will kind of penetrate in there, make the tomatoes a little, like all their juices sort of run. And just a couple of minutes, you know, of them sitting in that little sprinkling of salt is gonna make all the difference. And I always do this, whether I'm just having like tomato toast or using some tomatoes for some pasta sauce, just a little extra step will make everything more tomatoey and extra. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the tomatoes to do their thing with the salt, let's get our eggs organized. And then our spring onion as well. So I want to use the pale part of the spring onion here, and I'm gonna save the greens for a bit later on. And now let's get everything into the saucepan because of course we've only got 10 minutes. A little bit of oil in my pan. And then just have a look at these tomatoes before I add them in. So they've been sitting here like a couple of minutes and you can see they're getting nice and juicy. That salt has really started to absorb into the tomato. Just a little extra step there. Makes all the difference. Tomatoes in here, along with those juices and some of that spring onion. And now I just want a little smattering of garlic here. I don't really want a big garlic flavor. I just want like a hint of it in the background to my soup. So just half a clove is good, or a quarter even. And now just let these guys kind of get a little mushy with that heat there. A couple of minutes is all you need, just waiting for some of that tomato to break down. And so this one is a great one for any of you guys that might be pregnant as well. I don't know about you, but for me, morning sickness has been quite severe, which isn't really great when you film food, food videos all day. <laughs> but so a really simple flavor like just tomato and egg is something that has been really good for me to stomach. So uh, tell me what you guys have been eating. Uh, if you are also expecting, I would love to hear. All right, so you can see a really good layer of like red mush down the bottom there. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna add in some chicken stock. Just store-bought is fine. We're not being a hero here today. Uh, if you've got some homemade in the fridge or freezer, that's great. But let's just cheat a little bit here. Let's wait for that to bubble up again. So now I'm gonna add in some extra seasoning here, some soy sauce. And then for me, an egg drop soup has that really lovely texture that's kind of luscious and a little thick and, you know, luxurious. And for that, we need some corn flour. And just mixed with that with a little bit of water. And just give that a mix and as that kind of simmers away for a minute or so, things will start to thicken up and get nice and shiny in there. Okay, so now when we've got a kind of a rapid boil going here, we want to add our egg. And the secret to getting that beautiful, like web lacy effect on the egg is just to spin around, create a little vortex in the soup, pour that egg into the middle. Oh, I love that little, that little magic that happens when the egg goes in. Oh, just joyful. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of pepper here. And now let's make use of the green part of the spring onion we saved from earlier. I'm going to snip those straight in. 
And let me just check for seasoning. Oh, I love that flavor. All right, just a little bit more salt for my liking. And that is it. Let's get that out into a bowl. Just look at that ruby red color and that egg. Such a beautiful little pattern. Oh, the simplest things can bring so much joy. Wow, I mean, 10 minutes and you've got this. It's freaking insane. That tomato flavor brings so much umami and just a little bit of tanginess and the soup itself so savory and comforting mm. with that creamy egg out of this world good and so good for me because you know 10 minutes at the end of the day for a pregnant lady to make dinner is winning in my book oh and i didn't even tell you guys so boy or girl what do you think why don't you guess down the bottom if you've been following me on facebook or instagram you might already know but Let's see what you guys think. <laughs> mm. Yum. I'm going to need a whole bowl of this. Me and the couch and a bowl of this soup is where I need to be right now. Two words, egg porn. You guys are going to love this dish, not just because of the egg, but the beautiful greens and chicken and little bits of chili and this comes together in 10 minutes. I am always looking for amazing things to cook at home that take a minimal amount of time because just like you guys I am super time poor when I get home especially when I've got a toddler running around wanting my attention. <laughs> so 10 minutes guys we're gonna do this recipe we are gonna start off with a crispy egg because you know crispy egg porn Totally awesome for a weeknight. What you need is a hot pan, add some oil. Now we're doing this Asian style, so we need a fair bit of oil here. Until that oil's hot by sticking a wooden spoon or a chopstick in there, and I want to see some little bubbles. So we're good to go. Just crack your egg. Carefully get this in, it's a little bit danger mouse, but it's worth it. You should hear the splash straight away. You should hear that sizzle straight away. And now you want to get in with your spatula. Just kind of flick that oil over the top. And we want to wait till the bottom is really nice and super crispy. But I like to keep my yolk a little runny through the middle. And just pop that egg on a paper towel so the excess oil will drain off. the greens so I'm going to use Chinese broccoli or what's called gailan and the important thing here if any kind of stir fry is the prep you do when you're slicing we want to keep the firm tougher parts of the vegetable separate from the leafy parts so I like to just take a hold of these and just slice them lengthways through that fairly hefty sort of stem part because the other thing of course is that we want everything to cook beautifully at the same time and really quickly now just run your knife diagonally through the stems and by cutting them like this, we're kind of thinning them out a little bit. And that's also gonna help with the cooking time. Now keep your stems separate to your leaves. Now I'm not a stickler for the recipe instructions on this one. Whatever greens you've got at home, broccoli works really well, uh, choy sum works well, bok choy works, works well. This is really one of those recipes you just wanna have to hand that you can make with stuff in your fridge. Okay, now some garlic. Now again, with the garlic, it's about the chopping here. So I wanna keep these quite chunky, these pieces, because that way my garlic won't burn in the wok. And now some chili. 
I'm using a mild chili here. You could also use capsicum or go for a really spicy hot chili too. And that is pretty much it. I've got some chicken mince here as well. You could use beef or pork or turkey mince. The great thing about using a mince is that we don't have to be slicing any meat here. It saves extra time. And then for my sauces, I've just got pantry staples here. Oyster sauce, soy sauce and fish sauce. Now I've just drained off most of the oil from cooking the egg. I've left a little bit in the bottom there. And once that's nice and hot, and I'm gonna add my garlic and chili. And in goes my chicken. And just when the chicken is almost cooked, I'm gonna add in those stems. I just wanna give this another minute or so until those stems are bright green, beautifully tender, but still crunchy. Okay, so at this point, the chicken is cooked. I'm gonna add in my green leaves, oyster sauce, soy sauce, and fish sauce. And toss all of that through. Oh, look at that color. I love how beautifully nourishing and fresh and lovely this is. And there you go, guys, done. Quick dinners don't have to be boring. They can be beautiful and so tasty. Look at that. and one of those beautiful crispy eggs on top. Now there's a fair bit of saucy goodness at the bottom of this pan, so I want some of that on my plate too. So there you go guys, the quickest dinner I know how to make. And look at that egg. Crispy, creamy egg, mm. the chicken, the vegetables. This is really good. Mm. Yum. Spicy pork, fluffy, noodly omelette. Do weeknight suppers get any better than this? I don't think so, my friends. This is my spicy pork and noodle omelette. Okay, so even though it's my job to cook things, I still get to the end of the day and I'm kind of like, ah, oh, so tired and what am I gonna cook and what do I have in the fridge? And I'm sure you guys feel the same way too. So the origin story for this one is pure like end of the day desperation. <laughs> I always have noodles in my fridge, I always have eggs in my fridge, I always have some sort of ground meat and of course, because I'm me, I always have something spicy. So some chilies or some chili powder. So this is what magically happened one night. And I thought I would share it with you guys because I loved it so much. Uh, all right, let's get on to our spicy pork topping first of all. Just need a little bit of oil in my pan. And in goes my pork. So like chicken, turkey, beef, mince would all be fine here or even some stir-fried greens as well. Actually, I do love this with stir-fried greens. Now, I want some garlic in here, but because, you know, it's the end of the day and I can't be bothered to chop it, I'm just gonna grate it straight in. Now let's add all the like the flavor, the special stuff. Uh, fish sauce, some dark sweet soy sauce. I really love adding this one to a lot of my stir fries because I love the deep color it lends. And now some chili powder, optional of course. And then just because it's the weeknight doesn't mean we want to make things a little bit special. If you can, if you happen to have some fresh herbs, some beautiful Thai basil is great in here, but even just regular basil is good too, or some spring onions, or whatever you've got kind of kicking around in the bottom of the fridge there. Okay, and that's it for our pork topping. And now let's do the eggs. So I'm gonna do three eggs per person because like I'm kind of greedy and you know, it's a proper full on supper here. And 
I want to season my eggs with a little bit of fish sauce and a little dash of pepper. And now noodles. You really can choose your own adventure here. Whatever you've got in the pantry. I happen to have some of these like fresh ramen noodles. If you've just got like dried packet two minute ramen noodles, you could totally use those as well. Just um, rehydrate them before you pop them into the egg. Rice noodles are good too. And now here we go, let's make the fluffy omelette. We want a fair amount of oil in here. We are making an Asian style omelette here where we want things to get nice and brown and crispy. And I want this pan hot enough so that when I pour the eggs and noodles in, I hear a nice sort of sizzle. Should start to see the edges bubble up straight away. Now at this point I will turn the heat down just a little because I want the bottom to get really nice and deeply golden without burning and I want the top to almost, almost set. Now what I want to do here is flip that omelette over so that I can cook some of the noodle side and get that nice and golden. I'm just going to go ahead and do the danger mouse way and flip it over in the pan. You could totally use a spatula or you know whatever you like but um, it doesn't matter too much if it kind of folds. You'll see, we'll fix it up. <laughs> as long as it doesn't go on the floor. <laughs> okay, almost good enough. Now just uncover some of that. There we go. And see, look at that beautiful crispy golden brown color we've got on that first side. Mm. That is just perfect and it's fluffing up beautifully now and I'll just wait a couple of minutes to get a nice color on that second side. Now one more flip and you can see we've got that nice fluffy golden sunshine color there. Oh, it's making me happy already. Okay now I just want to fold this over and get that out onto a plate. Okay, now my spicy pork goes on top. And just a little bit of like optional extra for the end here, but I'm gonna do some coriander. And a little extra chili. And there you go, my friends, a super easy omelette supper. And yet, oh, look at how fluffy and awesome and amazing that looks. Let's have a look. Mm. Do you know what's great about that noodle? It kind of like fluffs up the omelette even more. So you've got this kind of like creamy, fluffy omelette. Mm. And then that spicy pork just kind of hits you. Mm. Ah, that is truly, I mean, you know, forget hours making dinner. Mm. I could eat that breakfast, lunch or dinner any time of the week. Yum. Believe it guys, we are going to make restaurant style Chinese hot and sour soup in 10 minutes flat. First thing we need to do is get our vegetables prepped. So I'm just going to go straight in with my carrot here. If you've got one of these julienne vegetable peelers, they are so great because you can just strip away the little fine shards of the carrot. Now if you don't have one of these, don't worry, just buy shredded carrot already pre-done from your supermarket. It's pretty easy to find those these days. Okay, and to that we wanna add a mixture of mushrooms. Now I've got some enoki mushrooms here, which I love for this soup because they turn into nice little silky tendrils all the way through our beautiful soup. And then just take your shiitake mushroom and the stem itself is a little bit tough. So, so just slice through that mushroom and then remove the stem and then just keep on slicing. 
Okay, so they go into our pot as well. And then I've got some firm tofu here and I'm just gonna slice that through the middle. And I want some fine slices of that. And then we want some bamboo shoots and some cooked chicken. Now I'm just using some rotisserie chicken that I've shredded up, but leftover roast chicken would be good as well. Or you could keep this meat free and leave the chicken out. Okay, and now for our chicken stock. So you know what, I'm just using a store-bought stock today because it's the middle of the week and I'm in a bit of a hurry. If you've got homemade stock, of course, go ahead and use that. And then we want to get this mixture gently bubbling away on our stove top. Mm, I love this soup. So most kids, when they're at a Chinese restaurant, are ordering, you know, the chicken and sweet corn soup. I was always the hot and sour kid, ordering the hot and sour soup. It was my favorite. Now time to add the seasonings. So I've got some light soy sauce here, which is just a regular Chinese soy sauce. And then I've got some dark soy sauce here for some color, some white vinegar. Now, if you've got some Chinese black vinegar at home, go ahead and use that. That would be the traditional vinegar to use here, but white vinegar is much easier to find. So you can use that one and some pepper. So the main flavors in this soup are sour, salty and then a really good hit of pepper. So I'm going to put quite a bit of pepper in there. And that is the hard part done, folks. We are just now waiting for this to bubble away, all those flavors to infuse and become nice and tasty. Oh, I just love the color of this soup. It's like autumn leaves, just lovely. Okay, so those mushrooms have softened now. It's only been a couple of minutes and I'm going to add in some corn flour mixed with a little bit of water because of course this style of soup is quite thick so I'm going to add this in and just like that our soup is turning beautifully thick and glossy. I just want to let that bubble away a few more minutes to thicken up a little bit and now let's try this out and see. Mm, that's good I'm loving those really nice sour flavors but you know what, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more vinegar and this is where your own personal taste will come into it. Add in some more vinegar, a little bit of salt if you think it needs it because that of course depends on your chicken stock, how salty that was to start with. And because I like things spicy, I'm gonna add in a little bit more black pepper. Such a simple soup but so ultra comforting. All that's left now is to serve up and just sprinkle with a little bit of spring onion. Oh,